Namaskar. Very good evening to all. I am Devendra Narayan, Director of HR and Corporate Relations, Shobit University. Uh, privileged to have uh, to moderate this uh, wonderful and a very hot and relevant topic today. Uh, I'd like to introduce my co-panelists for today's uh, program. First of all, I just want to introduce Dr. Ashok Mahapatra, the Vice Chancellor of Shiksha on Sangran, deemed to be University of Odisha. Uh, Dr. Nitesh Bansal, Professor and Registrar, Rishiwood University. Thank you, sir. Professor S. Sudhindra, Associate Dean, TAPI Management Institute, Manipal. And Dr. Mohit Dube, CEO, AIC, MIT, ADT, Incubator Forum. Aap sabhi ka swagat hai. We've been welcome to this session. Uh, the very purpose of today's interaction is to defining the industry academia collaboration roadmap. It's a very, I know, it is a very live, although it's old, but it's a very live and hot topic. I mean, everywhere, anywhere, when we talk about, we always talk about industry academia relationship we are talking about. And somehow, I mean, this thing, pinch me that whenever we are going on a, this kind of platform, surprisingly, academia interacting over this topic within the academia, and wherever, I don't know whether industry, because I've never been attending, I'm not going to pause to attend such session with the industry. Uh, and wherever the industry is talking about this uh, particular topic, I don't think any academia will be part of that deliberation. So this is really surprising. And I feel personally, I mean, this session will be more interesting and more relevant if is it, you know, when, when we are going to have both academia and industry together talking on this subject. <clears throat> See, the objective of uh, industry academia collaboration is basically to bring both academic and industry together to just not providing only the job opportunity to uh, the students of uh, students, but also it will help in developing research. It will help in developing innovation. It will help establishing a startup. So there are a lot of things. And uh, it, I'm being honored to, you know, uh, having a, such a uh, learned uh, people on this panel. I request Dr. Ashok Mahapatra, please, for three to four minutes, if you are able to have your views on this relevant topic. Uh, good evening, uh, all our esteemed panelists. I bring greetings from Lord Jagannath Blessing. I am from Puri. And uh, it is very interesting to know how the, we can have, as academia, we can take maximum benefit for our industry partnership. When you talk about a development, we talk about knowledge, skill, innovation, behavioral, personality development, leadership development, business model development, and also behavior with the junior and senior and everything. So when you involve the industry, they can give you the lectures which are oriented for industry. For last five years or so, whatever workshop we do, we call our Tata, Ambani or Al Nalco Railways and many people they come and deliver lecture which is skill and innovation oriented in our workshop we call so the uh, industry partnership is manifested in our university in various forms. Day for yesterday we had a management course where the leadership development and all the people came from the industry side and we did not involve anybody from our academia. Because when you talk about leaders in education, it's different leaders in industry. Our vision, our requirement, our temperament, our behavior, our uh, ethics are different. So I think for a holistic development of a student, both in knowledge, skill, innovation, leadership development, management development, how to develop a business model, model enterprising, behaving with a juniors and seniors, ethics management, how the corporate ethics has to work. That is not, you cannot give all this by lecture format. So I believe whatever you do in the internship, that is okay. 
but if you start it inculcating from very beginning of a core curriculum not towards the end of the curriculum during internship i think we will be motivating and showing the student the education is nothing but knowledge and implementation in the ground reality in the industry that is the reason i think every spheres of a student from beginning to the end he should have industry partnerships they should have their research laboratory in our universities in the mechanical engineering in the electronics and what not so i feel overall we will maximum benefit from the industry partnership thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much thanks for uh, initiating that big two key words that is knowledge and skill definitely these are the word uh, which are basically need and required to understand the uh, importance of academia and industry because knowledge came from academia and skill which has been needed and required in industry uh i request uh, dr nitesh bansal that nowadays we are talking about you know uh, innovation incubation how you feel that what is the need what is the required to actually bridge that gap what we are talking about because maybe we are able to create a road map but how are actually we are able to make a bridge between the academy and industry if yes then how thank you thank you devendra ji for the opportunity and my heartiest thanks and congratulations dr ashok for setting the tone of today's discussion i think those two words what devendra ji also highlighted use of knowledge and skill rather than information and degree because i see that there is a huge gap between in understanding of these two words and ashok ji have rightly used the word knowledge and skill and devendra ji picked up also very nicely yes everybody is talking about uh, incubation innovation right that is the need we need to look into it but i need to take you a step backward before we get into a advanced discussion why do we need this industry academy and collaboration i think all of us will agree we have been talking about as early as 25 years ago two decades three decades four decades ago when we started talking about that industry have to collaborate with the academy academy has to collaborate with industry but unfortunately what has happened the collaboration did happen it's not that industry is not talking to academy academy is not reaching out to industry but unfortunately what has happened is i think all of us have taken a turn in a different direction the collaboration is restricted towards employment of our students from their side the collaboration is restricted about you know sharing their capacity to our students without any further commitment involving us into i think the first thing what we need to understand not only the students we need to also involve our faculty member in this so called academia industry collaboration till the time we do that i don't think so we will be able to achieve the goal what it is actually stated for us or we are all are aiming at now devendra ji as you said that innovation incubation entrepreneurship these all are have become buzzword and everybody is talking about it everybody wants their students to be job creator not job seekers the innovation has to happen in every field no doubt about it. it has to happen and that's the only and covid has taught us all of us the only skill what somebody needs to be successful in the future is capacity or adaptability to adopt to a new skill because we really don't know people have spoken so much about that that jobs which are in demand now nobody knew 10 years ago and what is going to be in demand in future we have no idea as of now so this innovation word not only in terms of industry but i think in everything what we do in day to day sphere is very important and holds a very high position in terms of success whether it is delivery of education whether it is working and earning livelihood complementing supplementing or contributing in something of whether it is industrial world or a nation building whatever you say that has to be inculcated and we have to develop a mechanism where we trust each other right now what's happening the school education doesn't trust the university or higher education higher education doesn't trust the industry all of have their own parameters to select and adopt students now this is a recent phenomena all these big companies have started doing their exam i think that trust factor needs to be developed all three of us school higher education and industry 
are the most important part of anybody's life as together we form as a society. So we need to come together and formulate a path for our students right from their higher uh, senior secondary level or a secondary level where they are actually, you know, motivated to take a turn coming out of a conventional thinking that they are only here to earn a degree. I mean, the the information is plenty and it's all available on the internet. You just need to click a button. How to use that information meaningfully? That's the job schools and institutions of higher education has to do so that he can be the best fit for the industry. And industry is only looking to academia for two reasons. One is to creating new knowledge, what do we call as research. Second thing, getting a skilled manpower, what we call about placement. So these are the only two aspects, in my opinion, we need to think about, innovate, get new ideas and win the trust and actually start trusting our stakeholders in the society who play a major role. So that's what I would like to say. I'm sure we'll have a lot of other points to discuss. Yeah, of course. Of course, uh, Dr. Bansal, you rightly said the trust is the key word. The trust between, it is not only between, only between academy and industry, it is vice versa also. And that trust, trust deficit is really something which is very important and need to be taken care of. The second thing you rightly said, the use of information in a right manner yes if we are able to do that definitely we are able to reach up to some conclusion uh professor uh, sudhendra i mean my 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 just you I, my, i'm basically i just want to understand from you in our initial discussion to make it more you know elaborate do you think that the new education policy uh, is able to give some solution for uh, developing that roadmap which you are talking about? Yeah. Uh, so before I come to that, uh, just I, a couple of uh, thoughts on uh, uh, what earlier other speakers said. And I completely agree with uh, you, uh, Devinder Sir, about uh, what you said that academia and industry uh, should actually have this kind of uh, panel discussions together. In fact, I was fortunate to have uh, be one in one such uh, panel discussions one. So I asked uh, this. So the uh, industry wants uh, the students who pass out to hit the road running. So they, they want the students to be straight away employable. Uh, right from the day one, they should be useful. So. Uh, so I, I asked the question there because there were industry people there who were uh, uh, making their expectations known uh, from the universities. So I asked this question, how much are you willing to take part in, the, in, in this process of actually developing students? Uh, so I put forth, forth my own some, some of the requirements that we don't get. We, we actually, uh, as... Um, Dr. Nitesh Bansal said it's been over the last 25 years we, have, we are aware that we need to collaborate with industry and we've been going regularly and we have tried a lot actually to collaborate. Uh, when we see such collaborations abroad, so one of the questions was about Ivy League uh, uh, institutions, how they are doing this. When we look at, for example, in a Germany, a small, uh, small university town like a Passau or uh, some small, even small towns like that, they seem to be self-contained. It's not just industry and academia. There is a triangle, actually. There is a uni there is a university which is very, very uh, central to the town. And then there is there are some industries, actually, that cater to the town, uh, that employ people from the town. And then there is a society. There is a community. So there is a triangle, actually. And there is a lot of give and take between these two. There is a lot of ownership that industry says, this is my university. The society says, this is my uh, industry and my university. So there is a there is a sort of uh, give and take between these three. That I think it's missing even where we have uh, uh, university towns. I, I myself actually I'm employed in a, I'm I'm I work for a university which is in a university town. Uh, Manipal University Mahe is actually in Manipal, which is a university town. But I don't see that kind of uh, that kind of collaboration between the community, the 
the society and uh, so, uh, the community the university and the industry so because uh, uh, one problem probably is that the industries themselves are located in some places and not all over the country and universities also tend to actually uh, uh, better universities tend to be in big, bigger metros and that kind of development of university decentralized university townships i think that is not happening that's that's one of the key things second is that uh, the industry has to start uh, uh, thinking about them being major stakeholder not just as an employer or uh, uh, taking the knowledge but also as uh, for the entire growth of the students now this can happen if there are one to one collaborations i think the nep definitely talks about this kind of collaboration where there are uh, uh, actually industry and uh, uh, universities sit together and develop co develop co teaching is not sufficient that's not going to work uh, some industry people come and then they teach few hours and then go and in those those courses those classes those classes when industry people are teaching we don't even know whether whether the faculty is actually uh, listening and then actually is there any co teaching really happening or is it just that some of the sessions are taken by us on the other hand if an industry and a university comes together and develops uh, develops programs together i think nep is talking a lot about this so if that happens uh, the industry can actually tell exactly put down the requirements that they need of course it cannot be highly customized it still has to those students not necessarily will go into that industry but they can go elsewhere also so it cannot be 100% customized but 80% customization can work we are seeing this happening in actually some analytics uh, industry that is happening so they are collaborating with some universities and then coming up with uh, co developed programs curriculum is developed selection of students is made by industry and the academy together and even the delivery is happening together if this increases to other uh, uh, other places also then then i believe that that can actually lead to better collaborations because industry has to put their uh, money where their mouth is so there are some uh, industries that come and tell us that okay we also want to teach you but they want to take money from that so that that that's not going to work that that's a business that they are doing fine you do that but uh, at the same time uh, there are some uh, industries that come and then say we will run a full workshop we don't want a single penny there was an industry that came to our university where I, where i was in a, in my previous industry and then said we will take all your students take take them in a bus to my uh, 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 my uh, 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 company train them and then send them back we will have a one month workshop for them what was in it for them they were not even going to employ those students they were recognizing that they have a stake in the growth of the students in the in the society so that kind of awareness industries many industries have but many industries don't have so if that we are able to build uh, in this i think nep has to take a nep is not sufficiently addressing this in fact the government has to sensitize industry towards this responsibility of this third point that i have is that the research that uh, my co panelists have already mentioned cannot be self serving as of now research in academia is self serving i have to produce so that i can put it in my cv or i can comply with the requirements absolutely true, true. if i am isolated uh, and there is no in, uh, there is an incentive for me to collaborate with uh, uh, maybe faculty from other universities but there is no incentive for me to collaborate and put a, put the name on the uh, paper of some industry person in fact i am worried that maybe that that paper may not get published if there is a industry person so and also uh, what is the incentive for that uh, industry person to collaborate with me so industry is not in incentivizing that person and my university may not may or may not incentivize me actually uh, for incentivize is not uh, external uh, extrinsic in, uh, in, uh, incentives money or uh, or even promotions it has to be that uh, that that uh, that research it has to be recognized that research has to can go back to industry that is going to be the incentive for both industry as well as academia academia will benefit if their research is actually consumed by the industry and definitely industry will directly benefit so uh, the research cannot be any more self serving uh, this is in the hands of i think regulators they have to they they have come a long way in the last few years so much has taken place in improving research predatory journals are over 
so many uh, uh, so many corrective measures have come but this one step is needed now where the research becomes useful to society and and that can only happen through collaborative research and then government uh, regulators must also encourage that so that uh, so these are my views thank you for listening Devanji, you need to please uh, unmute yourself. You, you are Sorry. unmute. I mean, uh, Professor, you rightly said that uh, <coughs> the, the you started with the word given and taking is missing. And you will rightly elaborate the things with your examples, with your uh, discussion, that yes, it is very important that industry and academia should come together in a two sense. Uh, before I go to... Uh, Dr. Mohit, I give you a very small example. I think that example will, you know, so I get all of us that, yes, what exactly we want to talk and what we are talking about. In our university, we got a problem from a local industry about the welding. It's a real problem. And they are not getting the trained manpower to do that particular style of welding in their product so our technical somehow the the, the professor knows the industry uh, hr team and uh, sitting with them then the technical team came and said that we need to hire people who are able to do this kind of joint during the welding so our professor told them that why don't you try us we have uh, everything with us and uh, we will find out good people your supervisor trained them and you will get the exactly what you're looking forward for and as a csr pro, uh, project the university have taken that and we find out about 15 local welders who are do, do know nothing they don't have any technical education they just learn how to weld and they are hardly able to earn because one of our university in a very remote. So they hardly, I think, I mean, be able to earn the, their livelihood. So with the supervisor, they gave a 20 days training to these guys in a university system. And you surprised to know that all of these were able to get employment with that company where they are hardly able to earn five to six thousand rupees in a month. Now they are earning after doing that, they are able to earn more than 20, 25 thousand per month. On a regular basis so this is what exactly give and take and this is what exactly uh, you rightly said that it is not only about academia and university it is also the social impact of that togetherness so dr mohit uh, you tell us that uh, what exactly do you, you you do and what is your say on that how the academy industry come together so, so thank you, Devanji, first of all, uh, having me and, uh, you know, for uh, uh, moderating this fantastic uh, session. And thanks to my uh, co-panelists. So, uh, the Professor uh, Sudhendra, you mentioned about Manipal being an isolated place. Uh, you know, uh, I'm glad to share that I come from R.C. Suratkal background. So I graduated from R.C. Suratkal, which is next door to you. And let me say this very proudly that there is no institution in the world which is more scenic than... Uh, Suratkal with having its own beach and Manipal definitely plays a role there. Uh, you know, if and, and we used to joke it around that, right? If you want to stay in India, you know, stay around the campus of Suratkal. But if you want to have a glimpse of foreign, go to Manipal, right? So, so that that's the uh, uh, joke around in the town back then. But uh, coming to uh, uh, Devendriji's your point about uh, the role. So let me let me just uh, uh, share two points also. I after my REC days, I started with the uh, Infosys Technologies back when it was Y2K problem and all that stuff. Right? So I went uh, to US and worked with Bank of America for, for a decade and so. Uh, after I came back to India and, and again, uh, you know, Mr. Mohandas Pai's uh, uh, vision and, and Mr. Murthy's vision of community empathy program at Infosys, uh, in 2011, uh, uh, I think Mr. Pai moved out of Infosys to work with, uh, uh, you know, uh, Manipal Academy of Higher Education, Mahi, and I moved out of Infosys as a sabbatical to work with the academia. 
And, and after spending almost like a close to a decade in academia, and now currently I'm heading this uh, Atal Incubation Center uh, at, at MIT Art Design and Technology University in Pune. Uh, and, you know, this is kind of a mix of my past two experiences of corporate and academia, and how do you blend this uh, to create this ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship? So, it, so life has kind of come in a full circle where you work with corporate, you work with academia, and now you're working with Niti Aayog, which is the government of India's think tank, and trying to spread, spread around a lot of these policy insights and measures to, to bring the change into the mindset of these youngsters, uh, you know, be it the students or the faculties uh, on that note. Uh, uh, with regards to what is the role uh, of, of industry academia uh, in, in, in two sense, right? So, uh, well, earlier it was primarily around uh, industry would look at academia to be their, you know, a placement agency kind of thing, right? Uh, and it's not just limited to the private education. It, it's also true for uh, some of the best institutions like NITs and IITs, right? And that's the reason why you have the best of the best lot from IITs and NITs joining the corporate and not doing the further higher education in India, right? Even today, very, very few kids opt for higher education if they want to do their research or you know, further their career in the research uh, here back in India. You know, they either go out or, or they join some other uh, companies and, and work in their R&D wings and not necessarily do the uh, research education in terms of MTech and, and higher education back here. So I think with this new change regime, you know, post pandemic and how do we see uh, the, the need of uh, uh, research and innovation ecosystem to be built, it's slightly different than this whole regime of how we built our educational ecosystem with regards to be the uh, uh, feeders of these corporates, right? You know, initially we were, most of us were training these kids uh, uh, to be the feeders of the uh, corporate ecosystem. Now with this whole changing in the dynamics that has unfolded uh, uh, in the last two years and, and also more recently with the kind of Atmanirbhar campaign that we all are witnessing, there's a humongous need of uh, these three actors to come together. And, and uh, you know, uh, thanks to pandemic that all the three actors have realized uh, uh, that they have to work together. You know, uh, a government of a government, both central government and the state governments to, to act like a facilitator rather than the policing agent or rather than the regulator, you know, in a strict sense kind of thing, uh, but they, they are now more acting like a facilitator. And that's why you see a lot of these grants coming in, in the form of these incubators being supported through DBTs, DSTs, MSMEs, MITs, and so on and so forth on one arm. And on the other arm, you see a lot of these policy interventions that are coming, right? Uh, whether it's a national uh, innovation and startup policy, whether it's ARIA rankings or rolling out these IICs, institution innovation councils, and so on and so forth, right? And similarly, on the uh, research front, the government has rolled out uh, the, the National Research Foundation, which is on the similar lines of NSF in US, National Science Foundation, which has laid down almost like 50,000 crore budget, where you kind of uh, 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 submit the proposals which go to them, to various ministries, in the form of consortium. Now, if you look at those three layers, right, uh, how does this new uh, regime uh, plays out for both uh, industry and academia? So it, academia has to still play that role, which uh, Bansalji was mentioning about creating the new body of knowledge, which is uh, nothing essentially but a, a research element of that. But how do you go about putting that research, right? Unless until there is a problem statement that has been defined by someone, you know, whether it is ministry or the corporate, right? And you, you can't engage the academia to handhold number one and also be the part of that consortia uh, through which you would be applying for uh, the, the grants or the funding from the uh, various agencies. Uh, there comes the role of the academia because they bring, uh, the, the industry, sorry, where they bring the market insights, they bring the uh, wisdom of, of the customers that they have been dealing with, right? Academia, after all, through their limited resources, through their limited insights of the market, they can still do the extension work of carrying out the primary research, getting the data, getting the reports out, and so on and so forth. But, and so basically anything that moves out of like three years to five years kind of thing, industry is not interested to do that because they work on a Q on Q model, they work on Y on work, Y model. So their terminology, their vocabulary is quarter on quarter. Their, term, their, their vocabulary is year on year. And, and mind it, they are, they are for profit organizations, right? So their every dollar they spend, they have to figure out how would they get an ROI on that dollar that they're gonna spend. Whereas the, the education system in this country is still not profit, right? 
So if you want to combine this non-profit element and entity with a for-profit entity, you have to devise new, new, you know, uh, uh, model of you know engagements of model, right? Uh, where uh, these will become like uh, players who would bring a lot of market insights, who would become, who, who would bring uh, uh, the the uh, go-to market uh, 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 lever of, of of the equation. Because if the body of knowledge is created, and that's where a lot of uh, our academics are struggling. You know, if a lot of IPRs are created, a lot of patenting is done. What do what, what does uh, 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 you know uh, institution gain out of that? Right? It's just the publication. It's just the IPR facets. But industry has to be roped in to take that into market, right? So the commercialization aspects of these IPR facets that the academic organizations are creating, you know, uh, uh, they need to be roped into that lever where they will be partner uh, who will take this technology to the market, commercialize it, or do this in the royalty sharing arrangements and so on and so forth. So I think this, this new change in the uh, role of all the three players of government being the facilitator, uh, academia being the creator of uh, knowledge uh, or the body of knowledge and the uh, uh, corporates being the commercial partner where they will first bring the market insights. They will we have to come with the problem definition and also provide a lot of insights in terms of advisory, mentorship, and also uh, support through uh, setting up of these specialized labs, for example, right? You know, recently we set up a, a, a node in the blockchain for healthcare, which was again because of the partnership with the corporate. So we said if it's a dead money for a nonprofit organization to invest in certain niche technologies if you are not offering a course. So for us to make it viable, for us to make sure that the, the, the real outcome comes out of these labs, you need to be the partner here. So we will provide the land, we'll provide all the you know, maintenance related activities, but you need to bring this market inside, you need to bring this uh, CAPEX infrastructure onto the campus and we will rope in uh, the, the manpower in terms of your faculties, in terms of your uh, research students, so that we can offer fellowships, scholarship to these young passionate students, and also the faculty with this new national innovation and startup policy, you know, we, we always inspire our faculty members that, you know, don't just live out of your salaries. You know, institutions, universities will give your salaries, don't worry about it. If, but if you are able to participate in some sort of consortium based uh, projects, uh, and, and we are able to culminate that into startups through our incubation center that we, uh, I, I run, you know, you can own a 20% equity in those startups without even disturbing anything that, that you're currently doing. So I think a lot of these policy changes, a lot of this handholding from the corporate side, and they're also understanding all of this new scenario, you know, the change in the scenario, because they are, you know, gone are the, those days where they are able to live in their own silos and, and think that they are like sitting on a sage or something or, or, or a stage where it is up. Uh, because as I said, I mean, I'm, I'm very blunt when I talk to my corporate friends, because I say that when we were on the other side of the aisle, it, it, we always used to blame the academic fraternity. But when I came onto this side, we realized that, you know, these guys are, you know, very modest in a sense, because they have never been trained to be outspoken. And their biggest fear is, so they may not turn up for our next placement season kind of thing, right? So those dynamics are changing because of this changing environment. So I believe with this whole uh, sort of uh, collaborative approach where they have now come onto the table by, by understanding because we run a lot of upskilling programs in the space of EV for Tata Motors and around 600 to 800 employees have already been upskilled. So they are pretty happy with that. We recently submitted a proposal of 55 CR to Ministry of Electronics and IT with the consortium with uh, Tata's, uh, Tata Motors uh, uh, one entity, CDAC, Symbiosis and MIT. So these are the kind of consortia led projects which are big in nature, you know, the government is looking at under the NRF, as I mentioned. So I think uh, with this changing role of each of these three players, and obviously their lens has kind of changed after the pandemic. So I, I'm hopeful that in this next decade or so, uh, you know, the, the, the capital would start flowing in, the academia would start stepping on the pedal and, and not just look at as a, you know, downtrodden player in this whole equation. And, and the the academy and the, the corporate would also uh, see that you know, academics would play a humongous role, not just in upskilling, cross-skilling, but also, uh, you know, creating these IPR facets, which they eventually will have to take it to the market so that not they only serve their existing customers, but they will also have to invest in this uh, acquisition, acquiring these new startups that are coming out of these academic uh, ecosystems. So I'll stop there and maybe we can probably uh, touch base on certain aspects as we go along. So thank you for having me once again.
So Devinji, uh, you are you need to unmute yourself. Oh, maybe you unmuted uh, uh, and then you muted yourself. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Dr. Dube, uh, I'm really, uh, you know, appreciate uh, and uh, really regard you for, you know, saying that and uh, acknowledging this thing that it is industry who looks as academy as a placement agency. And, 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 and I absolutely agree. And it's very unfortunate. It is not only the industry, but our students also feel, their, their guardians also feeling nowadays that academic institutions are only uh, playing a role of placement agency. You just go join them if they and they come out with a, a beautiful uh, high package job. So so definitely, um, I think personally that this is where things start going wrong. And from this particular thing that uh, Dr. Mahapatra, I just want to know that, do you feel that uh, now we are everybody talking about although in Soviet university we started internship way back uh, in uh, uh, 2006 onwards and a different mode but do you really feel that uh, in uh, we are able to actually using the internship in a right way in academic institutions uh, i feel uh, it is not properly used in many universities because internship is a time you not only develop the only skill, but you should have also ideas and, and group discussion so that if you are not interested for a job in company, you can start your startup. So self-employability is also very important for, from which you can take off also. Because if you are producing 1.7 million engineers, everybody cannot get a placement. You know, unfortunately, when we take 70,000 MBBS and we feel that 1.7 million, how the people are going. And when you talk about placement, it may be about 10% people out of 1.7 million those who get placement. So we are talking balai and large, for the people in the industry and people in the management, people in the technology, they should generate the people, those who have self-employable, that are what you're talking, startup and uh, all these things. So that can only be developed if you have a dedicated effort in the industry level, how the things move, how you prepare yourself to jump to a business model where you can develop a business itself. So that cannot be done by academia or a formality completed internship. By and large, what happens if you have got a already package in the third year for engineering, IT company has given a 10 lakh package or 20 lakh package, you are not interested, your internship is just like I was. Because most of the time, internship either the summer vacation or at the end of the uh, fourth year. By that time, many of the good students have their job. So if you have already got a job, your internship is not going to attract you. It's just a formality. So I think internship business has to be very serious and it should be motivated that it is not one company what is matter. It is the development attitude, personality, corporate ethics, job development, creativity. So that in, in any time, we all saw how many engineers, how many managers, management fellows become unemployed during COVID. Millions of, millions of people across the world have lost job. I have seen people coming and crying, give us something in 20,000 rupees, even a tutor job. Why it has happened, neither they took anything seriously during study, nor the internship is properly planned and activated. So we have to motivate internship in order luxury or marriage or a honeymoon time. Internship is the learning, tactics, leadership, innovation, group discussion, and also self-employability, which is more important. So I think internship our professors and our mentors our company when they come and they should say internship not a paid holiday or if you have a got job that's not the end of the story at any time your leadership is not there your attitude is not there ethics is not you can be thrown out of job it's not like government job you join and retire after 40 years 
so industry has to tell them yes you can be fired at any time and pandemic has given us all opportunity to understand and relearn if we do not want to relearn then god can help us thank you i think we have to really plan interesting well thank you thank you thank you very much doctor i mean uh, you you rightly said because uh, internship is definitely is not a paid holiday internship is something a really serious business and it's unfortunate that most of us are you know confused between the internship projects and training and somewhere we need to define it well that what exactly internship means uh professor bansal again i am asking this question to you that although it is very well defined because i am not uh, able to uh, understand that why is it so that people are not able to differentiate between these three things training project and internship because i feel that if academia is able to understand this differentiation we are able to bit little more close to bridging that gap between industry and academia what is your say on this um devendra ji i would uh, slightly disagree with you in terms of generalizing the statement that okay. we don't differentiate between that yes there is a larger number of people who are not able to differentiate and there are certain amount of people number of students and academy and institution who can differentiate let me give you an example internship in a management and engineering institution versus internship in a healthcare institution the difference is huge and vast you ask any mbbs student what internship means i mean i'm i'm sure there are 10% of students who take that also lightly because that, that that's the part of a business in game there will be always some student as a student of dentistry i come from physiotherapy background I have my bachelor's masters and phd in that subject although never uh, very active in the clinical area but of course in the academic administration i've seen that what's the importance of internship for a nursing student for a medicine student for a dental student for a physiotherapy student occupational speech therapy student Visit is a uh, internship for a management and engineering, and within that domain also, student who is studying in an institution like ISB, student who is studying like IIM, student who is studying management or engineering institution like IIM or VIT or a certain for say Manipal University, you can ask them what kind of an internship and what kind of a rigor they go through. I think if somebody has to be blamed for that not being able to differentiate, I will take that blame on myself being a part of academy. Probably we were not able to explain that. Or execute it the way it should be. We always kept that as a optional thing. Doesn't matter. Whatever you do at the industry, whether you go or not, you will be given a satisfactory rank. Nobody, I, at least I have not heard somebody has to spend more time in getting their degree because of they couldn't perform and uh, in during the internship. The cut copy paste we all are very aware. It's better we don't talk about it as far as the project is concerned. but now again coming back to that project thesis training i think it's the mindset of the institution which is actually more developed by the teachers and the members of faculty that needs to be changed in order to make it more you know impactful and we all need to agree that nothing can teach better than except when they see it or do it themselves and i feel internship should be started from the very first year whether it start as observation then getting it engaged then as an you know working under in some supervision and then independent this is how it has to go and they have to learn working independently i would also like to mention here because internship is always seen from a perspective of getting that job in a particular company or industry where he is done and that is that's the main motive always for the institution also for the students also and uh, uh, dr dubey and you also dr devendra has said very uh, vocally and i think we really need to document that it's not the parent student or somebody who has made all of us a placement agency rather than center of knowledge creator and disseminating knowledge we all are running and showing our success only on one basis how many student percentage and how, how big package it has been given to them i have never at least in my ex- little experience never heard any ivy league college about placement be it harvard cambridge oxford mit stanford i have never heard them talking about the big placement yes i have heard them about how well their alumni are doing what they have done back to their respective alma mater 
And this is what we are lacking. And again, I'll come back to that word, which I find that's the main root cause of everything. What we are discussing is the trust. If we are able to develop a good professional, he is doing great job in the industry and he has a trust in his institution. He will definitely come back as a recruiter. He will always offer a great opportunity for internships. He will always ready to mentor students and he will always ready to donate also as an endowment for development of lab and everything. I think again that circle is what we do for students and what we expect them to do it for the institution once they go back to the industry. Second important thing I think in the whole cycle, the role of faculty members, that's most important. No matter how great internship opportunity or a project training or anything you create for your students, if our faculty members are not ready to execute it in a proper way, implement it in a proper way and then kind of a supervise in a proper way and get them a feedback that this is what you should be doing during your internship this is what you should be looking at and then assess them accordingly i don't think so we will be ever able to get the maximum amount of internship training on project whatever we assign to our students for teaching and learning purpose so i i would like to propose i think there should be a component of where our faculty members also spend some time in the industry because the teachers who have learned about 15 20 years ago must spend about one month or two months in the whole year in the industry learning how the industry functions so that they can come back and you know kind of uh, uh, direct the students or you know kind of uh, help them what is the expectation really industry has from them and what they should be expecting from the industry. If we maintain that kind of a balance I think we will have a great whole teaching learning environment be it classroom, be it industry, be it project or be it theory. Thank you Dr. Bansal because uh... My intention to make this question generalize is like an innocent student who want to know more from the professor. And you rightly, absolutely explain in a right way that what exactly the meaning of this and, and, and whosoever is listening, I mean, basically attending this program, they're able to understand what seriousness we five are taking today about this subject. And before I go to uh, uh, Dr. Dubey and Professor Suridharan, uh, that I just want to give you an example which I normally talk about when uh, I'll talk to my student and industry people about internship. So I always used to tell them that a small story that, you know, we all using two wheelers at our young times or we are using vehicles. So when we ever we go to an uh, auto workshop, we normally found that the, 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 the core engineer or the mechanic, they never come to us in the first go. We always send some Chotu or Ramu or a small boy who is knowing nothing about the product. They simply come and stand in front of you. And over a period of time, we find that that same Chotu, Ramu or that untrained guy, in another one year's time or one and a half year's time, is able to learn the entire secret of the trade be able to learn all skills and both what Dr. Mahapatra said and what Dr. Mansal you said that he is can able to start his own venture or even he can start training people, other people in the same area. So this is the power of internship when we talk in terms of relationship between industry and academia, bridging the gap between industry and academia. About the industry, now there is a very one word is very, very, very popular among the academia and industry that is <laughs> incubators. So, Professor uh, Surendra, uh, I just want to know what exactly you feel that how incubators are playing a role between, uh, you know, bridging this gap between academia and industry. Are they really useful? Oh, of course, they are useful. Uh, there is, uh, in fact, Dr. Mohit, Mohit uh, Dubey has spoken enough about uh, how uh, incubators can can be very useful. Of course, of course, they can be useful. Uh, in incubators and there are other forms like uh, centers of excellence that uh, some uh, universities have established. They they are one place where actually industry and uh, academia can come to. Incub incubators, of course, traditionally have been. Uh, uh, the places where uh, the budding entrepreneurs are uh, actually given an opportunity uh, there they get some funding in fact uh, universities uh, can establish um, 
collaborations with industry to actually set up funds that are allocated to the small little companies that uh, entrepreneurs come up and then so uh, in uh, big institutions in uh, are rather reputed and well known institutions like iits and all it has worked very well actually. but however that is not the same with uh, let let uh, if i may say tier 2 and tier 3 and so on because that that has not happened i have personally seen places where even when funding uh, funding was uh, provided uh, the actually the incubation did not take place either the students uh, who are entrepreneurs so would be entrepreneurs did not take that chance or uh, of coming up uh, with uh, good projects or uh, uh, the, the funding was not sufficient okay. so this this are uh, these are some problems one of the problems that uh, i found at least i can speak from the management education perspective one of the problems that i found was that students the budding entrepreneurs uh, from uh, tier 2 and tier 3 institutions are typically uh, they start late they do not get enough uh, uh, funding they may get support they may get but they do not get enough uh, mentoring i think that is where the, the major problem comes in Uh, the, if the mentoring is done by the faculty, and majority of our faculty, uh, uh, we 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 can't avoid that, are essentially academicians uh, who who cannot really advise or mentor a student who wants to set up an industry. There is simply that capability missing. So uh, you need somebody from industry uh, to do that. So these centers of excellence or incubation incubation centers. have to actually even in tier 2 and tier tier 2 tier 3 university institutions are major uh, feeders of students to the industry so and there are many entrepreneurs who come up so the confidence has to be built among those students uh, with the help of industry mentors i think that is uh, that is that is one thing that is uh, still missing other than that uh, the centers of excellence themselves they can actually act as uh, great platforms for collaboration between faculty and industry so that is one one problem that was stated in uh, uh, in this particular point where how do you actually uh, improve the faculty's uh, industry awareness so the centers of excellence can because they they provide that platform they can allow um, the, the faculty to actually closely work with industry people mentors also mentor together the, the students and therefore they also get a uh, very very important knowledge about it. so that is that is uh, something that i want to share thank you thank you thank you very much uh, professor dr dubey uh, you you uh, well explain about incubators and all what is your say i mean what is your suggestion to academic institution that uh, i mean we think that we are right what we are talking about but from the industry perspective what you think that what should be done to make industry and academia more close so that we should not talk about the bridge it should be have a full fledged smooth road with with academy and industry sure sure no, th- thanks i just would like to add to, uh, to what uh, uh, professor sudhira was mentioning about the role of incubators as well because i come from an industry background i spent around a decade there and then i spent around a decade in academic ecosystem uh, i i think there are three layers that we are trying to build here you know or, or, or before even i mention that uh, let let's be very clear on the role of incubators right they cannot be just an additional department on the on the land of the university they have to be a separate section 8 company right uh, while uh, we may be using the land of the university but the role of the incubators is beyond that university itself right so for example at at a uh, university where i am located i i have a incubary startup which is a ninth grader when he came came to me uh, and and a, a professor uh, who is 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 a, a, a professor at dental institution uh, uh, is is 54 years old so my uh, a portfolio of a startup so if you look at the kind of personas you know that we have as the startup founders is not just the 18 to 24 year old uh, uh, young kids who are just pursuing their education in one or the other discipline so i think uh, uh, the the role of the incubator uh, uh, essentially is to play that part which is like the third layer L- let me let me say the other two layers first right so if you look at the overall value chain of this whole innovation uh, ecosystem it starts with uh, uh, the educational layer and that's where the iics play a humongous role at our university 
the institution innovation council their role is primarily to excite these 10000 odd kids that are taking their education ugpg phd into different uh, uh, streams you know we run 14 schools you know we have film school we have design school engineering uh, you know management and architecture and so on and so forth uh, so their main role is to excite these kids by holding a lot of these outreach events by holding these expert sessions uh, on design thinking and so on and so forth uh, so if we are able to excite these kids that there is new puppy on the ground or on the campus which is about entrepreneurship what do you uh, do with that right so once that trigger happens in their minds then the second layer comes up the second layer is the pre incubation you know the first at the educational level when you are able to excite these young minds and they start looking at this new uh, 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 area called pre incubation it's kind of inquisitive in their minds so as to what does this pre incubation layer would make right the pre incubation layer primarily is taking the role of the heavy lifting uh, at our university more all the students right from their first year uh, you know once they are in the third semester they have to take up projects so once you take up those projects this pre incubation uh, uh, layer uh, it's called kriya kriya is center for innovation entrepreneurship uh, center for research innovation and entrepreneurship for young aspirants that's what c r i e y a stands for so kriya is as a pre incubation layer what is the role of that pre incubation layer out of those uh, 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 excited minds through the education layer if we are able to work with these kids on their projects by actually doing a deep diving by hand holding them on the projects you know by inviting a lot of corporate folks and again as i mentioned earlier you know the corporate folks have to step in with the mentoring role with an advisory role with basically the skin in the game kind of thing right and, and this layer even if you are able to take 10% of the pre incubation layer and filter them to the incubation layer i asked them that you know when you are moving from education layer to pre incubation layer you, you suppose you excite 10 you know you you touch base around 10000 students you take a 10% into pre incubation layer you know from this 10% layer you do another filtering of 10% only moves to this incubation layer so basically when you are able to outreach 10000 students you have some serious 100 uh, 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 student projects where i say they work go back and register your uh, company uh, and, and get your CI number. So once you have your CI number, I, I help them to get their DIPP number. Many of them don't understand that unless until you get a DIPP number, you are not called startup in this country. With a CIN, you can still be an MSME, but you're not a startup in this country if you don't have a DIPP number. So I make sure that they get this, you know, uh, esteemed tag of a startup by going through this whole rigmarole of CI numbers, applying to the e spice forms and dipp numbers and all that stuff so so they understand that it's a tough job it's it's not an easier job that you appear in examination and then you pass it and with uh, good numbers it's done no it, it it starts from there once you have your cin number once you have your dipp number then we start intervening at a very very specific intervention for example if there are ideation stage uh, projects we try to uh, uh, mentor them so that they are able to funnel through their ideas so as to what they need to work on, right? If they are into a design stage, we try to bring in some experts who will help them into the design layer of their venture building, right? If they are into a, a prototype stage, if they are looking for some technology support, we try to intervene it at that layer of that phase. So, uh, similarly, there are a lot of faculty projects that make into this or faculty supported projects because under, as I was mentioning, under NISP, they can be a co-founder and can have an equity up to 20% without foregoing any of their emoluments from the uh, uh, academic space. So a lot of these IPR driven project work that these faculties were earlier doing, you know, they need a lot of handholding support in terms of patent filing. How do you go about doing the trademark? How do you go about doing the re design registrations? So the panel of our uh, IPR lawyers would step in and support that. So I, thank I you, uh, uh, Dr. Dubey. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry to stop you between what, uh, because uh, we have a state of time and you are absolutely right said that this explanation is required. Uh, just in short, a few seconds, in fact, in 30 to 40 seconds, I just want to summarize that uh, with this discussion, one thing is very clear that it is not only a collaboration between India and uh, industry and academia, but it's a, it, 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 a collaboration between should be there between academia and academia. And you rightly said it, it is not only in academia to academia when we explain it, it's from the university to school, higher education to school education is also very much needed. And one thing which is very, very important come out of this entire uh, discussion is that 
faculty professors teacher we people are very important part of this and i feel personally that uh, that uh, faculty members industrial visit training and it should be part of their fdp and with this uh, i thank you all of you thank you very much for giving such a insight of this topic and uh, thank you very much and thank you very much for all the listeners who are listening us thank you thank you very much thank you. thanks everyone sure. thank you thanks to all the panelists and the moderator uh, for such an insightful session with this panel discussion we would like to uh, uh, we are coming to the end of day 2 of the epac uh, second higher edtech uh, conclave uh, maybe you take this opportunity to thank all our industry partners microsoft samsung avaya uh, intercell uh, true scholar yash technologies uh, without whose support uh, organizing a conclave of this magnitude would not have been possible uh, thanking all the panelists once again wishing all of you a good day thank you bye bye